Jenny. Welcome to my channel. Please subscribe, please hit a like, and I have a very special video for you today. So, been a lot of discussion about this little watch here, and this is a uh, Vostok dive watch, sometimes called a radio watch. And the reason it was called a radio watch is because of these little red marks that are kind of at the 12 o'clock, the 3 o'clock, the 9 o'clock, and the six o'clock position and these were times where uh, <coughs> emergency signaling could happen if you're at sea so and I believe it's three seconds of signaling allowable although I've have heard some people say four but if I look at the red marks right now you could actually signal kind of an SOS in that three second period and that was blocked off for marine reasons and uh, and if you were using your radio at say 500 kilohertz frequency at this period of time there'd be a uh, morse code message that would go to you to tell you to get off the air because those are periods of time where rescue then could be could be um, someone could indicate that they're in trouble so <clears throat> so the big discussion here wasn't that specifically for this watch it was let's take a look at a nice dome crystal this watch goes down 200 meters i've described it already and it's written on it, and it's the amphibia, Vostok amphibia, luminescent and everything else. The thing is, this watch, the bezel on it does not have a click. In normal dive watches, the bezel would have uh, 120 clicks for a better watch, and <clears throat> you could only move it one way and not the other, and this was to prevent the diver from actually uh, inadvertently changing the time here and not understanding that they they don't have 30 minutes anymore. They've got 10 minutes or something because it got hit or something and moved. So what we're going to do, the theory here is that, that I'm reading, is that water pressure would cause this bezel to be uh, immobile, to not move, right? So the water pressure would cause that. Now for the other side of the watch, this ring around this watch here, when this thing is, you take the ring off and then the case back just sits there and there's a very wide rubber gasket underneath this and <clears throat> and you put the ring on and as the water pressure increases it allows the case back to actually increase more because this ring is screwing on to the actual case of the movement and not to the case back so that is a pretty cool design the engineers came up with to allow this to be more uh, water resistant or give you a better seal as you go deeper so people were saying well maybe that happens with this watch so what i'm going to try to do is simulate this but the only thing i could think of is that when you're pressing on the top of this dome here it might widen out slightly causing this bezel to not move so i'm going to test that right now and see if that works i'm also going to see if i can find another one of my older uh, vostok watches that is like this as well and try that on that watch. I shouldn't have to put too much pressure on here um, to get down to say 100 atmospheres or something like that. Not 100 atmosphere. Let's say 100 meters of pressure. So I'll put a little bit of pressure on this watch and see what happens. So this is my GS crystal inserter. So GS tools US crystal inserter as it says on the top of this thing right there. Crystal inserter. Look at that upside down. So I fitted this already, and what my plan is, is put this watch inside here. Let's see if this actually fits. I think I may have to take something out to fit this in. Not sure. That won't fit either. This could be a failed plan, folks. A failed plan. I should be able to put this in here. Oh, I know what i got to do. The insert here can flip around the other way to allow me to, to get a little bit more depth. So if I go like that flip that around the other way then I put this in I get a little bit more size here so a little more room as they say let's see if I can so that's a good fit right there that snugs the watch in there nicely and if you look right now I can turn the bezel no problem it's still a bit stiff but I can still turn it and of course I'm stupid got to put this in first I picked the biggest one for the press side of it and I'm just going to put a bit of pressure on the top and with any luck I don't break the crystal on this if I do, well, so be it. I'll just replace the crystal later on. So, so I'm just going to turn it now. And now I'm going to put a bit of pressure on it by grabbing this and pushing down on it. So I'm going to just adjust my camera. 
All right, the camera is adjusted, so I'm going to go like this, and I'm going to put a bit of pressure on the top here and see if the ring that now turns still turns. That's still turning, and that's a lot of pressure on here. So the gasket pressure is not causing this to be stiffer. Let me go up again and just see if it's the same. Yeah, there's no difference in actually the pre the gasket will still turn here. So what I'm going to do is grab another one of my Voztok watches and put a similar pressure on the top of that dome to see if it spreads out and causes this ring to uh, to not be able to turn. So this watch is the original Boktok, right, which actually is Russian for Vostok. And this watch still has a loose bezel like that. And it is a dive watch. This watch does go under 200, 200 meters and it has the same back as the other one, same case back. And it also has the, I'll call it the wiggly crown. And it has a very nice thick rubber strap on it. So we're going to throw this baby in here and see what happens when I put a little pressure on it. Eventually I'll crush one of these, I think, but, but I'm going to try this out. So I'm going to just put it in here solid. Now, it wouldn't take a lot of pressure to put put atmospheres on this watch, okay? So right now, moving nicely. Press down on the crystal. Still moving nicely. Press down even further. Still moving nicely. Nothing. This thing still is a wiggly crown. So I pressed down quite hard on that crystal, more than you'd get diving. Um, and it still has a wiggly crown. And I know if you take this bezel off, there's just metal under here. So there's nothing, there's no gasket underneath the bezel that would cause additional pressure. And now I've got this really old one that I have, which is one of the Russian aerospace watches. Look at that baby. So this is also a dive watch. It also has the dome on it. And this also has a moving bezel, but this thing is so friggin' stiff it hasn't been moved in 20 years. So I think I could dive with <laughs> this one, but I could never set it. That's the problem. Oh my god! Oh my god! I think I need to oil this bezel. Uh, so I can't prove anything with this bezel because there's so much gunk in it and stuff. There, there we go. I'm turning it a little bit here. I got a little bit of a turn, so I'll go back the same way. I'll just do that with this watch, okay? And I'm going to have to detach it from here because I put a nice strap on it years ago. And that's, remember where I put it, third one over. Remember that, third one over. Give me a call. So I'm going to put that in the amazing crushing machine here. And there we go. And I'm going to try to turn this one as well. So let's put it in here first. And I'm going to grab this and see if I can turn it at all. This, this is a stupid part of the experiment because this is unturnable anyway. Even if I put pressure on that, I can't turn it, but I can... No, it's turning. So I can see with pressure, there's still no difference here at all. So, so that is a fallacy, I think, and I've got three of these watches here. And let me see, there are one, two, and three. And then I actually have a fourth one of these watches, but it really it was made for North American. It's the Reef, which is a beautiful watch, by the way. So none of these watches, all three of these beasts, none of them, the, the bezel here does not get stiffer or lock or whatever when you put pressure on the top. And I put enough pressure on here that this watch probably simulated 100 feet, maybe 200 feet. It's not spreading this this um, the actual crystal on here to actually lock the bezel. There's no uh, rubber or anything underneath these bezels as well. So there's no way of locking these bezels. So these are simply loose bezels on these Vostok or Boktok uh, watches. Um, this one's actually a time date too. Look at that. So I get the date time on this watch and it also has the wiggly crown. Let me see if there's just wind these things. And these are tanks. I'm telling you, these watches are tanks. And they were made for the uh, Russian military. They're setting the time. And I think I'm not sure if how to set the date. Is a one click thing for the date? I couldn't tell you. 
you see out one if I click it again that's winding and then out a little more time and I couldn't tell you how to set the date on this thing maybe there's a button on the side I've seen that before but let's assume I can't set the date and it's always the 22nd until the next day so that's it that's um, JD again there's my video I'm disproving it's a myth buster so the myth has been disproved that if you put pressure on here and there's pressure on the watch that this will stop turning I can't think of any other way that you could possibly lock this bezel with water pressure so, so that's it so thank you very much for watching my channel so there you go the three musketeers i just had to get back from work and put this video up just to shut everybody up and no, i'm just kidding this is my MythBusters. um so i'll put that on as a label MythBusters uh locking bezel with depth so look for that video and if you're watching this now you found it so there you go um those are three of my four uh, Vostok watches and anyway again these are way underrated by the way these watches are excellent dive watches they were meant for the military so they're designed for the military for diving they don't cost a lot you can pay a hundred bucks maybe 150 and they've got all kinds of styles if you you can still buy these watches and you can still support the Vostok watch company in Russia the company likely doesn't support what the country is currently doing. I'm just saying that watchmakers are not violent people. We're all kind of intellectual and nerdy in nature. So, so again, JD here, thanks for watching my videos. Please subscribe to my channel if you haven't subscribed already. I've got lots of stuff to come. I've got three more watches on the go. Um, I just looked down at one of them I was, I was working on and it's still ticking. This is a thing of beauty, still ticking and it took a licking, okay? So thanks a lot, and I'll catch you later. Bye.